Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to talk about SPSS. So I'm going to show you how to uh, do a couple analyses, uh, particularly descriptive statistics, also how to compute a new variable, uh, and uh, continue to run some central tendency in SPSS. Uh, so SPSS stands for the statistical package for the social sciences. Um, it's software that's used by a number of the social sciences, uh, particularly psychology, sociology, um, and a number of others. Uh, alternative to SPSS, there's also SAS, which is widely used and was one of the first data analysis packages. So, uh, just to start off with, I'm going to show you where our, our files are in the course website. So if we just go to module 2, you'll see the SPSS number one folder and this folder contains all of the files relevant to the first assignment. Uh, the one that we're going to be working with today is our practice data set and that is SPSS number one in class data uh, and the questions that go along with this will be the SPSS one in class assignment document. Uh, your homework data file and document are listed below this as well as two other videos to show you how to do descriptives and correlation analysis in SPSS. All right. So as I just showed you in earlier videos uh, how to access Eagle Labs uh, to get SPSS. So just make sure you go ahead and log in and open SPSS. Now here I already have the data file open so uh, once you open your data file uh, this is the first thing that you're going to see and so this shows you uh, a list of all the variables in the data set so the view that we're looking at now is data view and this shows uh, the columns as your variables so we have subject ID age gender education dig for and dig back uh, these two variables are digit forward and digit backward, uh, and they're essentially memory tests. So gave participants a list of uh, numbers and asked them to recall those numbers, both going forward and backward. And so these numbers represent the number of digits that they were able to correctly recall. All right. So first off, uh, let me also or next let me show you the variable view so in this view it just shows you what all the variables are that are present in your data set so they are uh, the type of variable they are as well as what the official label is uh, in the data set and what the values mean uh, most of these values do not require a, a value label except for gender so if we see here that uh, there are two options for gender, one and two, one corresponding to male and two to female. So let's head back to data view and also look at the document. So as we see here, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one, we're going to be asked to compute a new variable for all participants. Um, and so label the new variable memory. This new variable would be the average between digit forward and digit backward, which are the memory tasks. So let's figure out how to do that. So if you look up here, we have a number of options. To compute a new variable, we're going to go to transform, compute variable, and this window pops up. So here in the target variable box is where we're going to put the name of our new variable, which in our case is memory. So, but what does memory mean? What is this new variable going to look like? How is it going to be calculated? That's what the numeric expression box is for. So here, uh, memory 
is going to be the average of dig four and dig back. So we're going to get digit forward, pop it over into this box, put a parentheses around it, and look for digit backward. It's already over there. So there are a number of ways that we can calculate this numerical expression. Uh, the first is you know the regular uh, equation that we use for average. So that's sigma uh, over n. So the sum of your two variables, so digit forward plus digit backwards, divided by n which is the number of variables, in this case it's 2, divided by 2, and we will get the mean. The other option we have is to look at the preset functions. So we're looking for mean. So we're going to click all, and go down and find mean. So here it pops up for us. So the question marks, that's where we're going to put our variables. So digit four and digit backward. And there we go. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we could click OK and it would automatically run it for us and we'd be set. Or we could also get the syntax. So what syntax is, is uh, a code. It's kind of a record of all the manipulations that you've made to the data set. In order to get that, we're going to hit paste. All right, and here we have our syntax. Uh, and I should note that for all of the homework assignments for the semester, uh, I'm requiring that you copy and paste your syntax into your homework document. All right. So now that we've got our syntax, we want to go ahead and actually run this function. To do that, we're going to highlight all of our code here and hit this green play button and run it. All right. And so just to see if it's done, since we created a new a new variable it's going to show up in our data set and it has so right here we have memory and so just to do a quick check 14 plus 12 is 26 divided by 2 is 13 so all of these are looking good all right so we have successfully created a new variable in SPSS the next question we have is number two so, obtain descriptive statistics, including mean, standard deviation, variance, range, skewness, and kurtosis for three variables, so for age, education, and memory. All right, so let's go ahead and run those descriptive statistics. We're going to go back to the data set, and for all of the data analyses that we're going to be doing, go to analyze and here you see a list of all of the available analyses uh, but the one that we're interested in are descriptive statistics so we can use either frequencies or descriptives I normally do frequencies because in addition to calculating descriptive statistics we can also calculate frequencies so click on that and this box is asking us to select the variables that we want to analyze. So we're going to pop over age, as well as education, and memory. Next, we're going to go to statistics and calculate the mean, skewness, kurtosis, standard deviation, and I believe range. All right. 
and also variance. So we have all of our analyses and descriptive statistics selected. We go to continue and paste. All right. So after we paste it, we should have the syntax. And look, there it is. So we're going to highlight it and hit run. All right. So this next window that's popped up is the output. So the output is where we're going to see the results of all of those descriptive statistics. And so the first box shows us all of the requested uh, statistics. So here we see the mean for age, 65.98, mean education, 11.06, and mean memory score was 6.49. Uh, if we're rounding, normally round from the second decimal, so that would be 6.50, which is 6.5. Looking at the standard deviation, age 8.8, .8, and so on. And also skewness, and kurtosis, and range. All right, so now that we've got that done, Let's go back and answer some of these questions. So in the document I provided, I have included the answers just to make sure that you are able to check your uh, analysis results to those of the document key. And so age 65.98, let's see if we got that, and we did. And education standard deviation, 3.13. Education standard deviation, 3.13. And the kurtosis for memory, 0.218. Hmm. That is not the same. Oh, wait, excuse me. Standard error. All right. So actual kurtosis, yes, 0.69. Great. Off to a great start. All right. So the next thing we want to do is look at question three, where we're being asked to categorize age using the recode command. All right, so recoding is, in a way, similar to computing a new variable in that we're taking an existing variable and recoding its values into something else, um, generally into categories, so that we can use that new variable for different analyses. And so the new variable that we're going to create is age cat. So it's going to create two categories for the entire range of ages by assigning those who are 64 years of age or younger a value of 1, and those who are 65 or older a value of 2. And from there, we want to know uh, how many people are 65 and older in our data set. Uh, recoding a variable is very good uh, because it allows you to kind of transform your variable from uh, a, a ratio or a um, interval variable into a categorical or uh, nominal variable. And it could be nominal or it could be ordinal. Uh, and so that allows us to do different analyses with that variable. So let's go ahead and figure out how to recode the variable. So since we're transforming one variable into another variable, we're going to go to transform. And this time, instead of doing compute variable, we're going to go to recode into different variable. because we don't want to alter 
the current age variable. We just want to create a new variable. So here, uh, the variable that we're concerned with is age. So we're going to toss that over. The new variable name is age cat. And the label with the same name. Going to hit change. And now we need to tell SPSS uh, what the new value for this variable will be. So here you see old value and new value. So the old value is where you're looking at your ex existing uh, variable values. So for the new label of 1, we're looking at people that are from 8, 0 to 64. There are a couple ways we could do this. Uh, we could just type in 0 to 64, or excuse me, 0, through 64, and go from there. Or if you're not entirely sure of the range, you could just do range through uh, a variable. But for this one, since we know 0 to 64, we're going to do that. And so for those that are age 0 to 64, their new value is 1. And then hit add. And continue. Right. And so we're also going to do the same for 65 and older. So for this one, uh, since we're not entirely sure of the upper limit of the age variable, we're just going to tell it 65 through the highest value in that variable. So 65 plus, and we're going to assign that as 2, and hit add and then continue. So there we go, we're pretty much done. We're going to hit paste just to make sure that we get our syntax and then highlight and run. Alright, so let's look at our data set and there we go. Our new value, or excuse me, new variable is present. But we still don't know how many people in our data set are 65 and older. So for that, we're going to go to Analyze, Descriptives, and Frequencies. We're going to take out all the variables that we used in our previous analysis and add age cat. All right. So for this one, this is when using the Frequencies option is important. So we see here display frequency tables. So this is how we tell SPSS to give us the frequency table. Um, and in this case uh, it's already checked for us. Here uh, we still have our options for the last analysis saved. Uh, you know you could uncheck them or not uncheck it or not check them it really doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and click paste, go back to the syntax, highlight, and run it. All right. So here we have our first statistics for our frequency of age cat. So here is just telling us that we have a total of 502 people. Uh, that have completed data for this specific variable. Then we're going to go to our frequency table to figure out how many people are in each category. So for category 1, those 65 and 64 and younger, we have 229 people. For those 65 and older, we have 273 people. Um, and the frequency table also tells us what percentage uh, are represented by 
those categories. So for example, uh, those that are 65 and older represent 54.4% of our data set. Uh, and so what's the difference between percent and valid percent? Uh, percent is for all the data that you have. Valid percent is for all the data that you have completed. So valid would be the most accurate in terms of excluding missing data. For example, if here we had, you know, maybe 10 missing cases, our percent and valid percent would differ, in which case you would want to use valid percent. All right, so going back to the Word document, we see here that we should have 273, and we did get 273. And the last thing that we want to do is create a histogram for the variable memory. Go back to analyze descriptive frequencies, toss over age cat, toss in memory, go back to charts, all is selected, continue, paste, syntax, and then highlight memory and run. So make sure you change your variables uh, whenever you are doing different analyses. All right. So we're going to scroll down and there we go. There's our histogram for memory. As you can see, it's fairly close to the normal curve. All right, and let's go ahead and copy and paste the chart. So just highlight it, click Control C a couple times, and let's paste it on our worksheet. There we go. It's in there. Uh, and I'd also like you to include the syntax in uh, all of the homeworks. So to do that, we're going to go to syntax, highlight it all, and hit control C and paste it. Now sometimes this doesn't always work. Sometimes you'll have to convert it, the syntax, into a Word document and then paste that into your assignment which is also okay. And there we go. Ooh. All right. And the last question, the last thing we want to do is calculate a correlation. So is there a correlation between age and memory? Give the R and P value. So, to conduct a correlation, we're going to go back to analyze, correlate, and do bivariate. And our two variables are age and memory. So, click age and memory. And so there are a couple options for correlation test. Uh, the standard correlation is the Pearson correlation, and that's the one that we're going to be using this semester. Also, test of significance, uh, two tail by default, so we're going to leave that there. And SPSS will also tell us if there's a significant result. Go to options. Um, if you want to include the means and standard deviations, that's okay, uh, but I'm not requiring it for this assignment. So we're going to paste it. Go back to our syntax and run it.
All right. And so here is our correlation table. And it looks a little confusing at first, uh, but once you kind of get used to looking at, at SPSS outputs, it gets easier to interpret. So here we have a combination of, of rows and columns. So first row shows age, and it shows the correlation between age and age. So any variable correlated with itself will give you a R value of 1. And so the R value is called the Pearson correlation coefficient. Uh, it's what the correlation value is. So we're concerned with age and memory. So if we look here, we see that our R value for memory and age is negative 0.172. Uh, but is that significant? Look at SIG. So SIG is short for significance, and it's also the P value. And so look here, and it's 0 0.000. Anything that is less than 0.05 is a significant p-value and therefore a significant result or what we call statistically significant uh, and so 0 0.000 is well below 0 0.05 and we do have a significant correlation between age and memory so we're going to go back and record our results and so whenever you're reporting a correlation uh, this is what you would want to write so there is a significant negative correlation between age and memory so you put R in parentheses is the N so for this analysis we had a total of 498 people so you put that in parentheses equals and then quote the R value negative 0.172 comma p was less than 0 0.001 could also say p was less than 0 0.05 uh, either way you're indicating that that correlation was significant uh, and then interpret and say that the data analysis indicated that older participants had lower memory scores uh, because that's what the negative correlation is, is suggesting Alright, so after that, we we'll just want to add that last line of syntax. And really, I should move this down to the very end of the document. And there you have it. Please email me if you have any questions uh, regarding the SPSS assignment or anything in the course. Take care.